हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर प्रतीक टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विथ यू अ सर्जिकल वीडियो ऑफ नी रिप्लेसमेंट सर्जरी द पर्पस ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज स्ट्रिक्टली एजुकेशनल योर डिस्क्रिप्शन इज एडवाइज्ड वी बिगिन द नी रिप्लेसमेंट सर्जरी आफ्टर द पेशेंट इज पोजीशन सुपाइन ऑन द ऑपरेटिंग टेबल एंड टूनिके हैज बीन इन्फ्लेटेड वी पुट अ वर्टिकल इंसिजन ओवर द एंटीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द नी जॉइंट which should be of around 10 to 15 cm in length depending on patient to patient and it should uh, extend around 2/3 below the patella and around 1/3 above the patella then we elevate a flap consisting of skin and subcutaneous tissue both on medial and lateral aspect of the incision then we identify vastus medialis rectus femoris and patella tendon because they are the landmarks for our medial parapatellar arthrotomy following the identification medial parapatellar arthrotomy is completed and patella is everted knee replacement fundamentally is a soft tissue balancing surgery which means that we are trying to balance the soft tissues on each side of knee joint so that they are in equal amount of tension this is a typical case of knee osteoarthritis leading to varus deformity and fixed flexion deformity in this case there is around 20 degree of varus deformity and around 10 degree of fixed flexion deformity So here we are going to release the medial tight soft tissue from the proximal tibia by doing subperiosteal dissection. Now we excise the fat pad which is situated over the inferior aspect of the patella so that patella tendon is visible and lateral structures of the knee joint are visualized
in this case we are not going to replace the patellar component so we are going to excise all the osteophytes around the patella and do abrasion chondroplasty of patella This patient has highly inflamed synovial tissue in the knee joint which points towards inflammatory arthropathy as one of the etiological factor for her degenerative knee joint. Now we flex the knee while keeping the patella everted and excise the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament and both the menisci so that we have a clear view of femoral condyle. Now we mark the entry point for femoral intramedullary alignment rod. The entry point should be slightly anterior to the insertion of the posterior cruciate ligament.
intramedullary femoral alignment rod with distal femur cutting jig mounted on it is inserted inside the femur. We have adjusted amount of distal femur cutting to 9 mm and the valgus angle is 5 degrees. Now distal femur cuts are taken. sky and the remnant of posterior cruciate ligament are excised completely and anterior osteophytes over the anterior aspect of the proximal tibia are excised with the help of nibbler. Tibial cutting guide is applied to the knee joint 
and it is adjusted in such a way that either 2 mm below the lowest point or 9 mm below the highest point of the proximal tibia is excised. Careful not to damage the posterior neurovascular structure while executing the tibial cut. In this case there was slight tightness over the medial aspect so we did further medial soft tissue release. Now femoral anteroposterior sizing guide is secured over the distal femur with 3 degree external rotation. cutting block is applied over the headless pins, centering the block on the mediolateral dimension of the femur. Now confirming that there is no notching, all the cuts of distal femur that is anterior cut, posterior condylar cut, superior chamfer cut 
inferior chamfer cut and trochlear cut are executed. Following all the cuts, we remove the posterior osteophytes over the femoral condyle with the help of curved osteotomy. Box cut guide is applied to femur and box cut is executed with reciprocating saw. Now trial femoral and tibial components are implanted and then alignment, virus valgus stability, extension, patellofemoral tracking, anteroposterior stability and range of motion is assessed. Now tibial preparation is started in which we place appropriately sized tibial base plate on the resected surface of proximal tibia. We use tibial alignment rod through the tibial tray coupler to adjust the rotation of the tibial base plate.
confirming the alignment and rotation of the tibial base plate. Tibial broach housing is placed over the tibial base plate. Proximal tibia reaming is done followed by broaching the tibia with the help of tibial broach. Using standard mixing protocol for bone cement, the implants are implanted after cementation. Now we deflate the tunique and achieve the hemostasis and give thorough wash to the wound and then we proceed towards the arthrotomy closure. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Kindly like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and share your views in the comment section. Thank you.